Hello crafty friends, it's time for another Makers with Heart Mystery Envelope Challenge. This is Amanda with Crafting with Amanda and each month one of us sends out pieces parts with some rules or guidelines to the other six in the group and then we create using those guidelines and the pieces that are sent. This month Dawn sent us our package and as you can see she sent us these four four by six pieces from the Christmas story collection. Thank you, idea book. And I wanted to show you what colors that I pulled. I really only ended up using Scarlet Toffee, Black Harbor, and Pine, but also there's Sage, Candy Apple, Espresso, uh, French Vanilla are all in this pack as well. So what I'm going to do is a ornament. And I'm actually going to show you two star ornaments. And you start with a square piece of paper. So as four inches was my common denominator, I made four by four squares. And as you can see, I used some of my old stamp sets from Christmas time with this Christmas magic tag. And I'll cut that out by hand. And then I took the pine and the scarlet ink. And I'm putting the scarlet ink on the pine cones from this old stamp set. And that stamp set is Yuletide Carol. And like I said, so I'm putting scarlet just on the pine cones that are in the center of these pine boughs. And then I'm kind of rocking and rolling it into the pine ink, which makes those outsides green. So I have the pine cones are kind of a reddish brown where both colors are on it. And then with the green pine needles all around the pine cones. And this is just kind of a random stamping technique. Um, I had gotten too much of the scarlet on my stamp. I didn't want it to be that much brown on it. When you combine the two colors, you get a nice rich brown. And here I wanted to show you one of the tricks that I use is I use a permanent marker and I write the name of the ink pad on the lid because if you have all of these ink pads out and about, you might end up putting the wrong lid on the wrong base. And I don't like to do that. So like you can see here on my pine ink pad, I have the lid already marked. And what I did is I took the smaller pine bow from that same stamp set and just inked it up in the pine ink. And now I'm going to take Harbor, and this is from the Four Seasons or Seasonal Hall stamp set and thin cut. You can kind of see it there on the right hand side. And it's just a package of gifts that go into the back of the pickup truck. But I'm using them on my random stamped piece of paper here. Because I didn't get to tell you for Dawn, her rules were that we could add white daisy black or any French vanilla as much as we wanted. But she wanted us to create a background paper using one of the cardstocks that she sent um, at, with any stamp set that we chose. And then she wanted us that we could use any stamped images or sentiments from any stamp sets and that we could add stickers from the Christmas Story collection or we could cut images from the digital art from Christmas Story. Now that I have those packages on here, I decided I needed to add some coloring to them. I didn't want it to overpower. I thought about using markers, but like I said, I really didn't want it to overpower the pine and the scarlet boughs in the background. And while I was talking about Dawn's rules, I did take from the Party Girl stamp set that was a special a while ago. It has some background noise with stars in it, and who doesn't like a little pixie dust, especially around Christmas with stars? So with the toffee ink, I stamped that in there as well. And I love doing that with my random stamping. Um, one of the things that I did from the first that I became a Close to My Heart maker was random stamping and I just fell in love with it and the ladies that we all get together once a month they fell in love with it too. So I'm using my shimmer brushes because it's not as um, heavy of a concentration of color that it has less opacity you can kind of see through it more so again it just gives it that that lighter feel and I'm using the pine and then I did use yellow or lemonade I also used sapphire and then this is that sapphire and I also used a red. So I'm just trying to, with those four colors, color in all of the packages, whether it's the wrapping paper itself or the ribbon that's on the wrapping paper and just kind of intermix those. And because that sapphire is a little bit more of an intense color, I wanted to be careful to not use too much of it. So here's my trick for folding these with the right side down, so you're folding the, the inside towards you, 
I like to use that little rail along the front or the edge of my cutting guide or my, sorry, my Fisker's cutter. <laughs> Couldn't think of what that was. And by doing that, then when I line up the sides and I go to use my bone folder to make that nice sharp edge, the edges don't move because they're against the lip on this cutter. So now I'm just lining it up between the zero and the four mark and on the one inch mark and the three inch mark right in the middle on those folded lines, I'm marking the edges of the square. And I'll show you this again, but then you're going to cut up to that mark that you did. So this is a four by four square and I marked one inch on it. You can do these stars any size you want. Um, you cut your line one quarter of the inch of your, or one quarter of the size of your project. So let's say you were to do a 12 inch square because you wanted a super huge star, then you would mark those, you would cut those three inches deep because three is a quarter of 12. So here you can see how I'm using that ledge on my cutter as kind of my base. I'm going to push everything against it and you fold it in half both ways to get squares and fold it corner to corner. I find folding corner to corner for me is easier before there's other folds in it. It just works nicer. Again, I'm marking my one inch mark around those edges and you cut right up to there. This is all the hardest part of this, I think, is the next fold the next fold and then putting the two stars together. But I have some tricks for you for that. So keep watching and I'll help you out here. And they come together quickly. They really do. You could assembly line style these easily. So now you're taking the two sides, as you can see, and you fold them to your corners, kind of like you fold an airplane. So you're just folding it right to that center score line. And crisp edges are great. You'll see here how um, how those work. And this project is very forgiving. I'm not trying, you know, I'm trying to be careful and make it nice, but I'm not getting overly worried about if my all of my folds line up. Like that last fold, the bottom edges didn't line up. This is a very forgiving project. And you'll see why here in just a moment after I finish doing all these folds. I will just recap in case you want to write some things down or if you were writing some things down you can get it right but your ratio for how to cut this is whatever your square is your slits on the square sides are one quarter of the length so again this is a four by four square so my cuts are one inch in and then you fold those one inch cuts kind of down, you open those up and fold them into the corners like you would a paper airplane. And that's this part. And then the gluing the two, you know, four pointed stars together is the hardest part, like I said. And I like to use some either washi tape or some uh, masking tape. I think the, um, the masking, like the post-it tape, would be a little too lightweight. I think um, it needs to be a little bit stronger of a hold of tape for that. And so you can see here that I'm just kind of dry fitting. So I'm going to put glue on the inside of one of these flaps and then you just fold it over the other flap and that pops up so you have a nice 3D point here. And I try to do one side and the opposite side because then I'm moving the adjacent legs of the points a little less. So I did, if each one has a number, one, two, three, four, I do one and three, and then I go back and do two and four. And like I said, you just slide these over each other and you're good to go. And you can see how this is starting to get your star point formed. I like a wet glue here. I know some people have used wet glue and a uh, tear and tape glue because um, the tear and tape allows it to adhere right away. I just take my time and let it have a minute to adhere and hold it. And I was showing you there with the scissors that there is a gap that it does not lay flat. So that's why this is kind of tricky. And how I found best to work around that is I just took a little bit of masking tape here and cut some thin strips and then I'm taping the top star to the bottom star 
And what this does for me is it holds the other sides together. So I will take one side off and then put your glue. You can see exactly where those two pieces match up. And the glue is going to ooze out a little bit. So um, I just use my finger or sometimes the piercing tool to wipe up any glue. Check both sides, front and back. Put your tape back on and then move around your square. And again, I do opposite sides. So I do one and three and two and four. Um, you can just work your way around the star if you want. Some of it depends upon how fast your glue moves. But when I was doing like one, two, three, four, once you glued one and then you did two, you popped it up so you're just ungluing one. <laughs> so for me, this is just what worked. And like I said, this was the most, I don't wanna say tricky part, but it took some learning with how to hold my hands, where I wanted to go, what kind of, um, how much pressure to put between my thumb and my fingers as I'm holding these two pieces together because you kind of want to have them have some pressure but not smush the star if that makes any sense. So there is a learning curve here. Now off camera I went ahead and folded and put together the black Christmas paper and the pine paper but I wanted to show you what I've done on some of mine is I go ahead and cut triangles on all of my stars and because I'm not as precise, um, not all of those star points are exact. So I go ahead and use the star point itself as the guide. And um, I'll mark the star point that I start on because I've been known to like cut a triangle and then have to go fit it with all the star points again. I mean, there's only four of them, but I just mark number one and then I know this is the one I started with. And once I get one of them on there, it's pretty easy. So now you can see, I'm not gonna have you watch all of them, but I just line it up with my fingers on it, make a cut to the back, kinda transfer the hold, and then I'll just cut the scissors along the side and glue those all down. And I just continue that for all the star points. So now the only thing that you have left to do is to add your string and you do some embellishing. So here, I just take the piercing tool, you can take a needle if you want, and poke it through and just go slow and I turn the piercing tool kind of like a drill so that I'm not crushing the sides of the cardstock as I'm trying to push it through the paper. And then I just put the yarn or the string on a darning needle because it has a nice big eye. And the way I like to tie these is you put both ends together, loop them around your finger and put both ends through that loop. And then you can kind of slide that loop up or down for as big or as small as you want. I cut off my extra and then if you carefully just tug this through the one side then your knot is hidden inside your star. So that tag that I had created from that Yuletide Carol, I fussy cut that off camera and then I'm going to go ahead and use some of the gems that Dawn sent us this month. I will say that I opened this envelope of stuff and read through the guidelines and then I put it back away. And then I would get it out and look at it and try to, to figure out what I was going to do. I Because I kept thinking layout. I wanted to do layout because that's where my focus is right now in life. And um, finally, I realized I wanted to do these stars. And I'm so pleased with this project and loved that we had to stamp on it as a guideline. Dawn, thank you for that. So what I did there, this is a cautionary tale of not to put your ticket or your embellishment on your star until you see what's on the back side of it because it would have been a lot easier to stamp that little piece of candy on the back side of that ticket had it not been already adhered to the star. And then Dawn sent us some shimmer brush or shimmer trim and so I cut half inch pieces and then I dovetailed the end and as you can see here I just used my piercing tool to help me sneak it down towards the center of the star and again, I'm going to poke my hole for my thread. And do you see that little fruit fly that's been bothering me in my office? I have no food in here. I don't know why that fruit fly was around, but man, it kept flying around my eyes and crawling across my desk. So you're not seeing things that's here in my world. <laughs> again, I'm using the other two gems that Dawn sent us in our goodie basket on the backside of the star that meets our requirements. This was just a fun project for me, and I think you could embellish these 
as big or as little as you wanted. I think this would be a great project um, to use up stash and stickers. And, and here they are all done. The random stamped with the, the red side of the Christmas story paper. And here's with the black and pine. Be sure to check out all the other girls' creations in the link below. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what they've done. I This is my favorite month of the year. This and Twisted Sister I have a lot of fun with. So those are all in the video description. Have a great day. Be a blessing.